Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk to you now about the second most common cause of hearing loss after presbycusis, and that is noise-induced hearing loss. This is the, the amazing thing about noise-induced hearing loss, even though it's the second most common cause, it's also about the most preventable. That's the irony of noise-induced hearing loss. I just say, and any cop would say, as far as a cop being in our field, stop needless noise. Help America or help Canada keep calm. <clears throat> Basically, elderly in North America have poorer hearing than elderly in less developed countries. And the reason is because we hear excess noise. Let's look at it this way. Our ears were meant to hear soft voices over the crackling of a fire. We were never meant to hear the clanging of steel on steel. And that's the cause of so much hearing loss. After presbycusis, noise-induced hearing loss is the second most common cause of sensory neural permanent hair cell damage, cochlea, inner ear hearing loss. It's also the most preventable type of hearing loss. And it has a unique shape. Most clinicians, when we test hearing, we look at the shape of what's called the audiogram. The unique thing about noise-induced loss, the X's and O's, the O's being the right ear, the X's being the left, you can see that the hearing is quite normal all the way from the low to the mid frequencies and then suddenly there's a precipitous drop mostly past 3,000 Hertz, usually most pronounced at 4,000 and then somewhat of a recovery or an improvement thereof. When clinicians encounter this kind of an audiogram, that's almost like a visual giveaway for noise-induced hearing loss. You could almost tell by this kind of an audiogram, you might almost ask a client, are you exposed to noise or not? Actually, you do this in a case history before the hearing test anyway. But let's look at noise-induced loss a bit. Typical progression of noise-induced hearing loss over 40 years. It's gradual, it increases with time, length of exposure to the noise, and it gradually gets worse and worse in the high frequencies. Warning symptoms of it. Difficulty hearing what someone is saying three feet away. A feeling of fullness in the ears after leaving a noisy place. Ringing or buzzing tinnitus immediately after noise exposure. We've all been to loud concerts where your ears are ringing after the concert, that's a warning. Your hair cells are blown down. They're telling you you're hearing a sound when you're not. Maybe overnight the hair cells recover to some degree. So your temporary threshold shift or your temporary noise-induced loss recovers. Well, think of it like grass blades. If you keep walking over the lawn, the grass blades aren't going to stand up after a while. They're going to be dead. That's permanent threshold shift or permanent noise-induced hearing loss. And this feeling of fullness in the ears after leaving a noisy place. I recall people chopping down a tree at our old place where I used to live. And later on, the three fellows were throwing the branches into a, a wood chipper. You know those things that take the small branches and chick 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 Loud. The sound was so loud and the guy wasn't wearing earplugs. I stood at my level, <clears throat> at the porch of our house with a sound level meter probably 50 feet away and it was well over 90 decibels. I went running out to the guy with a set of earplugs and said, do you want to wear these? He said, yeah. He says, I can't believe how much my ears ring after. I said, well, yeah. You're exposing yourself to permanent noise-induced hearing loss. Let's look at noise levels. I mean, 30 decibels, well, that's a bit off. Ambient room noise with no one talking is around 35 to 40. Average conversational speech around 60, 65 and then yelling around 80, and then you start to get into the, noise, the jackhammers and the jet engines that are way up past 125, up to 140, and so on. So really our range of hearing is from around zero up to around 120, and you get beyond that and you're into the screaming levels. But how loud is loud? A whisper is 30 to 40. 
normal conversational speech around 60 to 70, shouting, and this SPL just stands for sound pressure level, shouting around 80 to 90, sounds like lawn mowers, loud music in bars is around 100 to 115, circular saws, jackhammers are around 120 to 130, a screaming jet engine is around 140, so that gives you an idea, but how much is too much? Well, there's two things to consider here. One, the intensity, as is shown in the previous slide, but secondly, the length of time you're exposed to it. In general, the louder the sounds, the shorter your allowed time exposure. Once the sound gets to be above 85 dB SPL, the risk of permanent noise-induced hearing loss begins. One can tolerate 85 dB for about eight hours a day. From this level, each time the noise is increased by 5, your allowed time exposure is cut in half. So if 85 for 8 hours is the cutoff, 90 is going to be for 4 hours, 95 for 2 hours, 100 for 1 hour, and so on. Try and figure out the exposure time for 120, and you're down to minutes. The outer ear canal and its resonance that we've talked about in an earlier video. Now let's look at your outer ear canal resonance in terms of noise-induced hearing loss. We said earlier that the resonance of this canal is very important for hearing the soft high frequencies of speech, didn't we? We said your ear naturally resonates like a wine glass at Christmas and it naturally amplifies the normally softer high frequency consonants of speech. And we said in that way that the outer ear is literally married or matched to speech. Okay, that may be a blessing when it comes to hearing speech, but it is a curse when hearing noise. The outer ear canal resonates like it does because it's an open cylinder closed at one end. Those things are called quarter wave resonators. It's about one inch or two and a half centimeters long and so it's going to resonate with sound waves that are four times that length. And if you do the math, you'll find out that really the resonance is going to peak at around 30 to 3500 hertz right over at whoops right over over at the, the high frequencies of speech and so hence the notch the notch of noise induced loss is actually due to the outer ear canal resonance and that so when you think of broadband or you know noise of all different frequencies comes filtered through that outer ear canal resonance you are literally adding about 20 db to that noise right at those frequencies and hair cell damage tends to occur about a half an octave higher than the frequency of the noise that caused it so if you take that resonance and you shift it up half an octave and flip it upside down by gum what do you got the noise induced notch and that's why noise-induced loss tends to have that unique shape to it. Now, what do you do to prevent it? Well, people have said, oh, you can plug your ear with cotton batten. Well, if you did that, you're going to get a quieting. They were, the word we use is attenuation. It's going to decrease the, the, the level of intensity by only a couple of decibels, maybe up to around 10 decibels as you get toward the higher frequencies. If you take those yellow foam earplugs, those are pretty good, but you get what you pay for. I mean, you'll knock out about 30 decibels, which is good, but look what they do to the high frequencies. They really knock it out. Now, that's fine for someone in construction who's working a circular saw because he or she isn't trying to talk to anybody, okay? So they're just trying to protect their own ears, which makes perfect sense. So you pay a buck and a half and you get a set of foam earplugs, great. But if you really want, if you were in a band and you were trying to hear the music and hearing it not so blocked off and you want all the frequencies preserved well then you're gonna pay a little bit more and you'll get a type of musicians earplugs now musicians earplugs first I'll go back here you're looking at those foam yellow plugs they will kinda of knock out sound to to this degree which is great 
It depends on your purpose, okay? So if, you're, if that's fine, and you can get sound isolating uh, headphones and reusable plugs that you'll find to fit the ear. Again, they're all gonna block things off to some degree. Usually these are the best. They'll, they'll create the most sound quieting, the most attenuation. But if you're getting something like musician's earplugs, I'll tell you something about these. Remember we talked about the outer ear canal resonance? So here's your outer ear canal resonance in blue. You can see where it peaks around, you know, 3000 hertz right there. Okay, when you're using musician's earplugs, you'll pay a little more for them. But the beauty of these is that they knock this they preserve the shape of that outer ear canal resonance. They just reduce it. So those plugs are known for the fact that not only do they protect the ear against noise damage, but they also allow you to hear and understand speech quite well at the same time. Musicians, earplugs. So there's very, but you'll pay a little more for those as well. Noise-induced hearing loss and tinnitus. As we said in our tinnitus video, the noise-induced loss tends to cause a high-pitched ringing type of tinnitus. And by the way, if I flip up here and you'll take a look at this audiogram here, the tinnitus will usually be heard right around 3000 hertz, right where the hearing damage has begun to occur. That, so tinnitus is often associated with noise-induced hearing loss. And uh, so noise-induced hearing loss, well, there it is. That's essentially going to be where the, uh, the, the frequency of the high-pitched ringing in the ear. It'll be just around the precipice of the hearing loss itself. Noise pollution. Elderly in Africa have, tend to have better hearing than we do. They have less industrial noise pollution. Our ears were meant to hear soft voices over the crackling of a fire or maybe a lion roaring in the distance. We were never meant to hear the clanging of steel on steel. If you can hear someone's headphones and you're not listening to the headphones, imagine the decibels slamming into that person's eardrums. We all know we don't look at the sun because you're going to burn out your eyes. Somehow people think that the ear is impervious to the ravages of noise. It just ain't true. Thanks for listening.